guys, Cindy out here with my Arts Endeavors. How are you doing today? I am here with Explorations of Me, and I did a boo boo this month. <laughs> I had it completely recorded, I had it edited. Oh, and you can see my pucky dog nose. See her right here? Right there. That's my Cavalier King Charles. She has to be in on the business today. Um, anyways, what I did is I had this month's prompt completely recorded, I had it all edited, and then boom. Cindy did a boo-boo. I shut the editing program down and I lost all my footage. So what we're going to do is we're just going to talk about my page this month and, um, whoa, <laughs> sorry, Pucky. Um, we're going to talk about my page this month and about the topic. So what the prompt or topic, whatever was for this month, it says, what is your favorite skill or talent? Now this is about you. It's not about anybody else's skill or talent. It's all about yours. And what was it from how did you learn it was it from childhood was it from experience did somebody teach you um was it from school you know let's let's talk about that well it took me a while again Pucky's thinking she's checking this out to figure out what my talent was what i felt was my um favorite skill or talent and what i did is i ended up doing i couldn't decide on one area like just artist or just um you know uh art journal or whatever so what i did my main that i'm i'm really proud of and i'm and i i love what i do with it um and i think i'm somewhat skilled i don't i can't say i'm a perfectionist because i'm not i'm not an expert but that is in being able to create being creative right so this is my my talent and then i thought you know i don't want to just stop with that i want to talk about the different things i do with that talent Okay, so the first thing we're going to start with, this is stained glass. Everything in the green is stained glass. And then what I did is I took and found all different words that I felt um, applied to my stained glass creativity. I've got unforgettable because you think about it uh, as you get these stained glass pieces and they're completely done. They are unforgettable. You remember pretty much all of them that you do. Um, I can be unique in the glass. Meaning, again, I can pick the colors, whatever I want. They shine. You don't get good ex at stained glass until you have a lot of experience. Um, I've been doing it almost 15 years, I think. And um, I haven't done it in the last two years or three years. And I noticed I went out into, I'm setting my stained glass back up. And I actually got, a, um, we call it a, a, we call it the glass house. It's actually a shed slash she shed. Um, <laughs> say that three times fast. And what I'm doing is I'm actually setting that up as my stained glass shop. So I was out there the other day and I was checking things out. And you know, it's going to take a while to get back into some of this because it's, it's kind of like drawing. You have that muscle memory, but if you don't do it for a while, it takes a bit to get back into it. That's the exact same thing with stained glass. Um, it's wonderful. I love doing it. It's just a lot of fun seeing what it ends up. There's tons of colors to play with. Um, again, heart. I love to do it. And it's beautiful. That's the way I feel about stained glass. Um, and I don't do the lead came stained glass. I do the actual um, copper foil and solder. So it's a lot of fun. But you do have to have experience at it. You're not going to be perfect right out the box. Um, this one here, the pink. Uh, this is one of my new creativities that I'm actually learning and I'm enjoying a lot, and that is baking. Um, I've, I can cook. I don't cook by a recipe. I cook the way my mother taught me years and years ago, a little of this, a little of that, and that's how I cook. But baking has never been my thing. You know, I could throw a box cake together, that was it. Well, I've been in this um, mode of baking bread and rolls and cinnamon rolls and cookies and I'm just really enjoying it. I'm finding that um, there, you know, you can imagine the different flavors and colors and, and ingredients that go into, let's say a loaf of bread and you can totally change those up depending on the style of bread, which is really cool. Um, it's comfort, of course, we end up with comfort food at the end. I smile when I'm doing it, it's heartfelt. I feel it's creative, especially like I said, with the spices and that sort of thing with the bread. Um, I usually do it in the afternoons if I'm having a really good day. 
Um, I will come in here for a while, do you know my normal stuff in the morning with my art, and then I'll go out in the afternoons. I'll throw on Netflix and I just start baking. So it's a lot of fun. Again, it is create. It's creative. We enjoy it, and I can share it. And that's another thing that's really cool. I make three loaves of bread. We don't have to eat all three. I give away two. Okay. This side is um, journaling, and we're talking about personal journaling. I'm not talking really about art journaling. I'm talking about personal journaling. And surviving chronic pain, this is huge, huge, huge in my life. And what I do is I get creative when I journal. I don't just sit and write words in a journal. I do some collaging. I do some doodling. I do some painting here and there. It's not an art journal because there's a lot of personal stuff in there. Um, I can write about my dreams. Um, it's actually a healer. Being a journaler actually helps. It helps you heal from pain. It helps you heal from any past experiences. It helps you heal from hurt. Um, it's a great place to, to put something down that is safe, okay? I think it's also an adventure. It makes me believe in myself after I go back, you know, I'll go back, sometimes I'll go back a couple years and just read some, and I realize where I was at that stage of my life and where I am now, and it's just really cool. And it makes me believe that there is power in journaling. Um, Survivor, it, it also helps me to accept things. Um, I will go round and round and round in my journal, and I may write the same thing over and over and over again, but it helps me to accept where I'm at, and it also allows me to be happy. I get to work through the changes depending on what's going on, um, and for me, it's restful. It's very, you know, when I get up in the morning, I have a cup of coffee, and I want to write in my journal. It's just very relaxing for me, and it allows me to just take my day and get rid of anything I need to in my head or celebrate anything I need to in my head. Whatever the case may be, it goes in my journal. So that is huge. That's a huge part of my life. Or I should say my creativity. This one, of course, we know, mixed media. All right, I, I am not a fine artist. I know that, okay? I am not a great sketch artist. I know that. I'm not a great um, painter. I know that. But you know what? I'm a mixed media artist. I have a lot of fun with the supplies that I have. It makes me happy. All of my stuff is authentic. I do not copy other people's things. When I sit here and do something, it just comes out of my head. Um, I, like, for example, my Crazy 8 videos or my Exploration of Me videos. These are all, um, they just come out of my head. I just sit down and I start doing. That's one of my girls. But this is my mixed media, right? Um, sometimes I look at it and I go, oh, did I do that? <laughs> um, I can imagine it's very carefree. You do have to learn how to take risks when you are a mixed media artist. And what I mean by risks is don't forget to try your same product. Let's say, for example, I've got these. They're sitting right here. I just got done doing a video. Um, this is the Marabou. This is some plate color metallic. Don't forget to take your supplies and see what else they do. Will they work on a jelly um, print? Will they work on um, textured card stock? I mean, take the risks. I shouldn't say risk. I should say, um, ex um, I can't think of the word, exploration of the, the um, products. Use them differently. Play around with them. Um, it's fun for me. I love doing mixed media. It gets me out of my head, which means it gets me away from my chronic pain. Does it make the pain go away? Absolutely not. It's still here. But instead of concentrating on how bad my back hurts or how bad my leg hurts or, you know, my fibro is kicking me, um, it, it gets me kind of out of my body, out of my head. So I'm thinking about something different. Um, it kind of takes the chronic pain and just tamps it down a little bit. So um, it's fun things to make. Everything I do is unexpected. I never know. When I open up a page like this page, I had no idea what I was gonna do. I just picked out some colors and started painting. And then this is what became of it. So for me, it's totally unexpected. Um, it makes me happy, it's fun, it's a journey. And I like to call myself an artist because as far as my creativity, I feel like I am an artist in a certain sense. 
So um, where did I get this from? Where did I learn it? This actually an old friend taught me how to do. I She was doing it and she taught me how and I just fell in love with it. Um, this, I actually, the baking, my baking bug started out by watching um, one of the Great Britain's uh, best baking show. It has Paul Hollywood and Mary Berry in it. And the more I watched them with the pastries and the breads and the pies and the puddings and the cakes, it, it just sparked something in me. And from then on, I, I just started right in baking and I've been doing it ever since. Um, journaling. This was actually suggested to me by one of my counselors many many years ago is to write and when I first started doing it I when you first start journaling you're very um, what's the word I'm looking for you you play it safe you you write down maybe what happened during your day you don't get deep and into the emotions and into the mind and into the the soul and spirit of you as you go the longer you journal I feel the better you get at it because instead of sitting there saying well the Sun was out today and we went and had pizza tonight for dinner and you know tomorrow I think it's gonna be a take it easy day that's just the safe way of journaling now I will go into it and I will say okay well the last two days has been tough this is what happened the first day this is what happened the second day and I'm actually talking about real life right now because I am just coming off a major fibro flare um, today I feel like my body is a hangover but <laughs> um, and that's without drinking anything but now I will actually get into the details of what happened this is what I felt um, this is how I coped with it um, thank God for my husband he kept me watered and fed as I like to say <laughs> he makes sure that you know I have liquids and he makes sure that I have food throughout the day and you know he's really good at it yesterday ended up being a day in bed the day before was a day on the couch so it got progressively worse today I'm not a hundred percent which is fine um, I you know figured I'd come in do a couple videos and then I'll be back on the couch today because my body's just not up to full steam I've lost a lot of energy but anyways that's my journaling and that like I said came from a counselor that I had many many years ago and if I go back like I said into my very first journals you're gonna see what the weather is and what I did today and what I ate and maybe where we went and that's about it um, the mixed media how did I learn it well the mixed media I'm gonna tell you how my journey with mixed media started I was um, seven years ago I was in an accident and um, I hurt my back really really bad um, after surgery after physical therapy after injections all that kind of stuff um, the surgeons told me there's nothing we get to do to fix it so I ended up at home not working which normally I worked anywhere from 60 to 80 hours a week um, here I am sitting at home all alone everybody's gone off to work off to school whatever the case may be and who am I so how it began is I ended up one day um, my counselor at that time because I was going through this almost like trying to recreate my who I am right so she says to me one day she says have you ever done a dream board no she goes well she goes and here I am I'm thinking to myself I'm 47 years old you know um, yeah my dream was to add another six or seven years on to my career and retire right and she says well she goes I think you need to do a dream board and I got home and I thought you know what no I don't need to do a dream board I need to know who the heck I am now prior think about it if anybody says to you hi how are you what do you do okay um, I stay at home in chronic pain okay that's not who I am though um, prior to that I would say oh I'm a network engineering supervisor at a, a big company and I do audits and blah 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 well now you know it's like hmm, what do you do who are you so what I did is I got home that day after the counseling and um, 
I, I just had this crazy idea. So I went and I got a large Eggo waffle box out of my freezer, threw the waffles back in the freezer and I took the box, cut down the edges. I had some newspaper. I took um, three or four layers of newspaper, put them together and glued them all together. And then I literally <laughs> took screws and screwed it into the spine of the waffle box. And then I started working on these pages and on the front of it, I actually still have the journal. I'm not quite sure where it is right now. I think it's up on a shelf in storage. Um, but on the front of it, I put I am. And then every page I had to try to figure out who I was. And I did that by grabbing my craft paints and pouring my heart out into those pages. And I had to figure out that Yes, I'm still a human. I'm still worthy. I'm still loving. I, I'm still a mom. I'm still, you know, and it, this is what started my mixed media journey is my I Am book. And from there, um, I started watching videos on YouTube and it just exploded. And here I am six years later and I'm still doing the mixed media. I absolutely love it. Um, like I said, Prior, I'm not a perfectionist. I'm not an art. I'm not a fine artist um, by no means, but I enjoy what I do. So that is the biggest thing for me. So that's how I got into the mixed media realm. Um, I think with all of this, experience applies because once you start doing stained glass, the more you get experience, the better you are. Once you start baking, the more experience you get, the better you are. Same with journaling. The more journaling you do, the better you get, you know, the, the, the better you are. It's just, it takes a lot. Um, mixed media, same thing. You know, if you go back and look at your first mi mixed media project, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, that's awful. No, it's not. It's where you began. It's part of your journey and it's part of life. You know, we didn't all start off walking and riding a bike in a day. We didn't do that. It takes progress. And that's the same with your mixed media art. It takes progress. So don't stop doing your creative things. That's where I'm focusing on this month. Um, don't stop doing them. Continue and get better at it. You know, and if you don't want to be able to draw a perfect face, there's no big deal. Draw the faces the way you like them. And I'll be honest with you, um, these are my faces. I like them. They're cool. I'm happy. It's all good, right? So the same thing with your creativity. Don't expect to come right out of the box and be a professional because it's not going to happen. All right. So back to the topic. What is my favorite skill or talent of mine? I feel it's the creativity in me. Um, I can pretty much do a lot with creativity, whether it's gardening or um, decorating a home or whatever. I use my creativity pretty much daily. All right. So now don't forget to check out the other artists in the description box below. They're all going to have their own take on what their special talent is. Um, I can't wait to see the videos and I can't wait to see what you come up with. Don't forget to share it in my Artsy Endeavors page. Uh, if you go into the description box, you will actually see um, it's called Cindy's Link Tree. Click on that and you're going to see everywhere you can find me on social media, including my Facebook pages. All right. So don't forget. Um, have fun. That's what life's all about. Happy creating. Definitely share and I'll see you guys next month. Take care. Bye.